Let's move the bill be read a second time. I call the member for Newtown. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to speak on behalf of the Greens on the Terrorism Legislation Amendment Police Powers and Parole Bill 2017 and express my deep, deep concern that we are seeing this bill brought in and rushed through this place today and put it on the record that I believe that the Greens are the sole party in this place that will be opposing this bill. What a shock. I note the Minister says what a shock. And it's not easy to be standing here when we hear the tragedies that are described by the people that have spoken on this bill up until this point, to be the sole voices as the Greens opposing this bill. But we need to look at why we're opposing it and we need to look at why this bill is being introduced. Just the other day I was asked a question while I was doing an interview as to what I thought would be the outcomes as a result of the latest terrorist attack in London. I was on a panel on the ABC Drive program and it was clear that all the panellists from very different political persuasions agreed that there's not an easy answer to how we would solve or respond to this. And the, pan the, uh, the interviewer asked whether or not we should be pulling bollards up on every street corner and we all agreed that obviously that was not the world we wanted to live in. One thing that I did say and that I did say that I feared at that time was that actually, even though the solutions are not easy, that we would see conservative governments at a state <coughs> and national level in this country <coughs> using the terrorist attacks and the tragedies that we had seen in the community as a way of being able to justify strengthening police powers and winding back protections on human rights and civil liberties in the name of counter-terrorism, but in actual fact, as part of a move which has traditionally been happening in this state over a long period of time, which is providing police with significantly more powers and curbing our human rights. We have a legislation review committee in this place as part of our processes. Has this bill gone to that committee for review? No. We have the ability to be briefed on legislation and we have the ability for bills to be tabled and considered over a period of five days so that people have a chance to consult with key stakeholders, to consult with human rights organisations, to consult with community members, to consult with others. Was this bill laid on the table such that we could consult the stakeholders and the community on this matter? No. When was the bill received? A good Two hours, two and a half hours ago, it was tabled in this place. Last night at 6.30, we got an email offering crossbench members a briefing on this bill. We weren't able to have a copy of that bill, so if you weren't able to make it, you weren't able to see that bill. We now see the bill being rushed through this place that provides significant, significant shoot-to-kill powers for the New South Wales Police. When a police, the Commissioner of Police declares that an incident, an incident as a terrorist attack. The Greens New South Wales have serious concerns about the proposed shoot to kill police powers. These will not make us safer and instead will work to push New South Wales closer to a police state. We strongly urge both Labor and the Coalition to reconsider this measure in two particular areas. One is that the fact that the coroner never recommended this change. This change was not recommended by the coroner. We also have very serious concerns that once a terrorism declaration is made, these shoot-to-kill powers can be used not just against those in terrorism activities, but anyone at that location. Let's just have a look at that for a second. This bill is being rushed through. There has not been time to consult with key stakeholders around it about what the unintended consequences of this bill could mean. And we have serious concerns that the bill, as it stands, would allow for once a terrorism declaration is made, that these shoot-to-kill powers could be used not just against those engaged in terrorism activities, but anyone <coughs> at that location. That has serious repercussions for what that means for the police powers in this state and what it means for the safety of our community in this state. The bill carries on a trend of laws that we are seeing that empower police to be able to use increased powers, including anti-protest and move on consorting laws, together with other laws that inflict on people's civil liberties and human rights. 
It should not be underestimated that the community is feeling terrified about what is happening around the world and in our own community at the moment. But that is exactly the time when we should be celebrating the values that actually make our community safe, that make us connected. And that is the fact that we actually have a wonderful multicultural society. We share values that are connected to actually protecting each other, to looking out for each other, and to living in a very safe and vibrant community. That that is the part and at the heart of this. But instead, what do we do? We use these terrifying, terrifying acts that have occurred by individuals to whip up further fear by increasing further police powers and use these tragic events as a way to wind back human rights and civil liberties. And the Greens cannot stand for that. And I, as the representative of the people for Newtown, cannot stand for that. If the government did really believe that there was genuine support and a lack of concern around the human rights implications and the civil liberties implications and the other details around this, why are we rushing this through? Why are we not allowing this scrutiny to occur? The police already have the right to use reasonable force to save a life. So there is no reason to give police additional shoot-to-kill shoot powers in this bill. The laws that empower police to kill citizens are a fundamental threat to our civil liberties and to human rights of individual people in this state. So it is remarkable that these laws are being rushed through Parliament in less than a day. The bill is not a recommendation of the coroner, who made it clear that the New South Wales Police have already the appropriate powers, and it is clear that these shoot-to-kill powers would not have made us any safer in this situation because the key learning, the key recommendations and the key lessons from the Lynch siege, which was an absolute tragedy, is that there was an overwhelming need for within the police for good processes, for timely information and for quality training. What is being proposed today in this bill was not a recommendation of the coroner. We also have serious concerns about the impact and the scope of what this means when a terrorism declaration is made and the fact that there is no independent oversight of the police commissioner's decision to trigger these shoot-to-kill powers. There are also serious concerns about the parole changes which go well beyond what people who are accused of terrorism or support terror organisations are subjected to, because it extends to their friends, to their families, to their workmates. And this is what we have seen historically with counter-terrorism legislation. It's not that there is not an intention there to try and address the issue of terrorism that is a concern to everyone in the community, but instead the extent and the scope to which it reaches out to actually curb other people's rights and liberties. The fact that there is a risk that these shoot-to-kill powers could be used on anyone in the location, as opposed to the people engaged in the terrorism activities, takes this way too far. And the fact that the parole changes could extend to friends and families and workmates, such that the sister of someone involved in these offences or their workmates could be covered under these provisions. We live in a community where we should be celebrating at this time more than ever the fact that we are on the whole united, on the whole connected, and on the whole share values that do not want to see this kind of insanely significant change to police powers without any civil society engagement, without any consultation with the community, and instead acting on something under the pretense and guise of an incredible tragedy that occurred just across the way, without that recommendation being something from the coroner. If it was a recommendation from the coroner, maybe on principle we would still agree, but I could understand it. There is no expectation, there is no understanding of why this needs to be rushed through. This is a serious concern and it is one of the biggest concerns <coughs> that we would have about this, is the fact that not only are we seeing a massive winding back of civil liberties, but we're also seeing it being done in the name of tragedies where there was no recommendation to make this change. The Greens opposed the bill and we expressed sincere disappointment at the fact that the Labor opposition is again lockstep with the Liberal government when it comes to these changes. We expressed concern that we need an opposition in this place that will stand up for civil liberties and human rights in the face of this fearful time 
and the Greens are willing to be that voice. Thank you. The question